does meat cause cancer? We've been hearing all the time lately that we need to decrease our consumption of meat. We need to stop eating bacon. We need to stop eating steak. We need to stop eating all the sausages and hamburgers because it's going to increase our chance of bowel cancer. People have been saying that just increasing your intake of bacon by 50 grams a day will increase your risk of bowel cancer by 20%. But what does that 20% actually mean? Does that 20% mean that if your risk of bowel cancer was 1% before, now it's going to be 21%? No, God, please, no, no! Does it mean if you eat more bacon five times that much, that your risk would be 100%? No! No, obviously not, not at all. In fact, it means something far less significant to the point of being meaningless. Let's go into the study and I'll show you what I mean. The study they get this nasty 20% from actually comes from a recent analysis on 500,000 people in the UK. They did an epidemiological study, looked at what they ate using a food questionnaire, and then over about six years, looked at their incidence of colorectal, aka bowel cancer, and then compared it between different groups based on intakes of different foods. They found for meat, and this is simplified by the cancerresearchuk.org website, they found that the lowest intake group, which ate less than 21 grams of meat per day, out of 10,000 people in that group, 40 of them got bowel cancer. And in the highest meat intake group, which is about 76 grams a day or more, they found that 48 out of 10,000 people got bowel cancer. Now, true to their word, 48 is 20% higher than 40. But that's just relative risk. That doesn't really mean anything outside the context of the absolute risk. And the absolute risk, which is the actual difference in raw percentages, you know, what people would normally think of as risk, shows that this is actually fairly significant. Let's do some math now. What is 40 divided by 10,000? About 0 0.4%. Or about 48. That's about 0.48%. What is 0.48% minus 0.4%? Just 0.08%. As in, the increase in incidence of bowel cancer between the highest meat intake group and the lowest was just 0.08%. Not 20%, no, that's relative risk. Again, essentially meaningless without knowing the raw numbers. The absolute risk, the one people always think of when they think of risk, was just an increase of 0.08%. That is basically meaningless, even without considering all the other various flaws in epidemiology that make it a largely useless study, it is clear that this isn't an actually a significant increase at all. You can play it and call it an increase. You can almost see it as just statistical noise. But this is what they use to say, oh, we need to eat less meat anyways. 0.08% increase. I mean, think of the headlines. What if the headlines were actually honest and instead of giving people the relative risk, actually gave people the absolute risk? What if the headlines were to say, eating more bacon is linked to an increase of cancer of 0.08%? Would you even pick up that magazine? Would you even click that article? No, most people would look at that and say, that means literally nothing. That is meaningless. That does not matter. I'd rather eat more bacon than worry about a 0.08% increase in bowel cancer. It is essentially meaningless. Yet, instead of being honest, instead of using absolute risk, they use relative risk. They use this big 20% knowing that people don't realize that that's relative risk. They see that as absolute risk and it scares them. 
It's a trick where, while telling a factual statement, they are effectively lying because the people don't understand it the way they do. It's called being duped. And it's not okay. You've been had. You've been took. You've been hoodwinked. Bamboozled. And the thing is, most of the supposed evidence against meat is this exact kind of study, using these weak correlations blown up into these huge percentages that aren't the actual risk in order to make you think that you shouldn't eat meat and see a risk that isn't even there. Don't worry about eating more bacon. It's actually very healthy for you. Meat, red meat, and stuff like bacon is actually very dense in nutrients and plus has zero carbs. It's perfect for the diabetic approach. That's right, even bacon has tons of nutrients. And they're all very important and essential to a healthy life. So don't worry about it. Chop down that bacon, grill that steak, fry that goodness up, and enjoy your red meat, your processed meat, maybe not the hot dogs, because you know, that has extra stuff in it that might have issues. But whole red meat in general is very healthy for you and it's not going to increase your chance of cancer. If it does, may it be an increase of 0.1%. Given how nutritious and how healthy it is and how great it is for the diabetic low-carb approach, I'd say 0.1% chance increase is a price worth paying. Now, if you like this video, if you want to see more, you want to learn more about why meat's great, how to tame type 1, how to do a low-carb approach effectively, be sure to like the video, share it around with your friends, subscribe to the YouTube channel, like the page. All in all, give support wherever you can so that way we can spread the message on taming type 1 and you can keep updated on our latest content. So for now, be sure to eat more meat and be sure to tame that type 1.